Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Clayton Bagwell. I'm with the NERSC Account and Allocation Support and the Business Operations and Support Group. And quickly going to talk about um, the types of accounts uh, that we have. And uh, those two accounts are user accounts and allocation accounts. So the the user account is your personal private user account that's associated with your login or, or username. Um, it provides authentication, which is your personal identity, and authorization, which uh, says what you're allowed to use. Uh, you request an account um, on your own or your project's PI uh, or project manager can send you a link to request an account. Uh, there are five primary roles for user accounts. There's the PI, the principal investigator of the project, a PI proxy who can um, act in the PI stead. Um, we have project membership managers and resource uh, managers. And then the, the, the uh, grunt of the, the project, the user. Um, the second type of uh, uh, account we have is a project allocation account. Uh, this is like a bank account that you use to pay for your computer time and your file storage. Uh, it's managed by the PI and optionally one or more project managers. Um, all nurse users will belong to at least one project account. Uh, although an individual may uh, belong to more than one project account. Uh, and if that happens, then you need to identify one default project in the IRIS uh, portal. So user accounts, um, if you don't have a, a nurse user account already, which most of you probably already do, uh, you would go to this iris.nurse.gov slash add user page, and you can add, um, uh, uh, request an, uh, a user account there. Um, if you already have a, a previous nurse account uh, that may be deactivated, uh, you can go to that same page and there's an option that says, I have a current nurse account, and you can click on that option and put in your um, your nurse username, and then select a, pot, a project to add or a project to join, uh, and that'll send a request to the PI um, to ask them to let you uh, join their project. So we have a number of uh, account policies. One of them is the acceptable use policy. Um, it's incorporated into the account request form. Uh, you can actually go to this um, URL and, and take a look at it whenever you need to read it. Um, the, we do require passwords and those must be changed uh, every year. Um, you should not um, share your password with anyone. Uh, or, or anything having to do with your account. And do not email passwords because we don't need to know what your password is. Um, and we couldn't tell what it was even if if, um, uh, if you did send it to us. Um, if you're logging into, um, say, Perlmutter or, or Iris and you get five consecutive login failures that will typically lock out your account. Um, say if you were trying to log into Perlmutter and you messed up your password five times, you should be able to log into Iris and that will clear those login failures. Um, however, if it turns out you've just forgotten your password, uh, there is a link on the Iris login page that will allow you to uh, go through the process of resetting your password. Uh, and if you get totally stuck, then you can always send an email to uh, account support. Um, passwords um, must register. Register is either safe or very safe on the password uh, strength meter. Um, there's no character complexity rules regarding what needs to be included, uh, but you do want a password that is safe and not easy for somebody to break or guess. Some good passwords are lead speak type of passwords, or they just uh, use a bunch of words uh, concatenated together. And of course, bad passwords are things like password or one, two, three, four. Uh, if you're st struggling to come up with a good password, um, the iris can recommend uh, a password for you uh, that should work 
uh, with the uh, complexity that we have. Uh, we also require that you use multi-factor authentication. Uh, this provides an additional security layer uh, to accessing NERSC. Uh, it's required of all users. And we use a soft token type of um, one-time password or multi-factor multi -factor attendant. Ugh, I'm sorry. Multi-factor authentication um, where you would uh, have some type of an uh, app or software that does the generation of the one-time passwords that's linked to the MFA token that's stored in IRIS. And then there's the, um, the URL for information on, on how to set up the MFA. Uh, basically, what you do is you can log into IRIS and there's uh, an MFA tab under your profile. Uh, you should go to the button that says add a token and you'll get the screen that has uh, like the token serial number and a QR code that you could either um, photograph the QR code on your phone to for a um, like Google Authenticator or some some uh, app that you have on your phone, or there's a, a URL uh, that you can copy and paste into to a software like Authy or something like that. Okay, so Iris, um, if you haven't already believe that is uh, our web-based portal uh, for managing your account um, and also for managing projects uh, where you can check the daily balance, change your password, change login shells, et cetera. Uh, the PI and project managers can manage the users and the allocations and run different reports. Um, uh, on, on the Iris login page, there's uh, a number of links that you can get help if you need help with either setting your password or if you've forgotten your username or if something's happened to your um, uh, authenticator and you need, need to need help with your MFA, you can get uh, you can get a temporary code to help you log in. We also have uh, what's called federated identity, um, but Currently, that's only available for some of the national labs um, where you can connect your uh, account from, from the lab, from that lab to NERSC, and then you should be able to log into um, our websites uh, like uh, IRS or, or the doc, or doc site uh, using the uh, credentials that you have at the, uh, at the other location. Okay, now allocations. Um, PIs apply for resources through what's called the PERCAP, the Energy Research Computing Allocations Process. Um, it's accessed through our NERSC Help Desk system um, and can be accessed directly using the URL ERCAP.NERSC.gov. Uh, it's used for renewing uh, current projects, and uh, which is something that we're in the process of doing now. And also uh, any uh, new projects uh, that a PI wants to start are, are submitted here. Uh, we ask for information such as your science objectives and approach and resource requirements, the amount of com computing time, either CPU node hours and GPU node hours, and also for uh, file storage on the community file system and the HPSS archival file storage system. All of the ERCAP requests are reviewed uh, by the DOE Office of Science Program Managers. And for the um, renewal and new requests for the upcoming uh, allocation year 2024, um, uh, they'll be reviewed and we'll announce awards uh, for the projects for next year uh, in December. And uh, the new allocation year will start in January. Uh, we do accept their cap requests throughout the year. So somebody who uh, has a new project they want to start, they can get a, what's called an exploratory allocation. And uh, if that works out, they can go to a DOE mission science production type allocation for the next year. So uh, we are limited to the amount of time that we have available um, for 2024. Uh, we'll have 22. almost 5 million uh, CPU node hours and 
12.3 GPU node hours. But the, that amount of time is then divided between the DOE mission science, which is the majority of our um, allocations. Uh, we also have a 10% that's allocated to the uh, ALCC Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge, which is handled through a separate uh, request and a, an award process. And then we have 10% uh, allocated to our director's reserve, uh, which includes the uh, small exploratory allocations some education and, and staff projects. This is a, a little diagram of how our CPU time is divided up and distributed for 2024. Um, so essentially it's seven, almost 18 million CPU node hours. Um, divided amongst all these uh, DOE program offices. Um, and then for GPU, we have uh, 9.89 million GPU node hours that are available. Um, when you do submit an RCAP request, you want to size your uh, the amount of your request and keeping these uh, amounts in, in mind. Typically, the uh, total number of requests for a time that we get is you see, almost three times more than what we have available. So the DOE program managers have to make a decision about what their priorities are and how much to, to award to each project. So it can be rather competitive. Uh, if you are applying for GPU time, you, know, you need to make sure that your application is able to run on GPUs. And we have some uh, a page in our documentation site that uh, you can check to make sure it does. So you can run out of time in two ways. Uh, a user or a PI can be allocated um, either a certain percentage of the total time that's been awarded to a project, or the PI can just give them a certain fixed number of hours. If the user runs out of the time they've been allocated, uh, they can still submit jobs to the overrun queue, uh, but they'll have to contact their PI to get uh, an increase in either their percentage or the number of hours. If the project runs out of time, uh, then the PAI will need to contact the appropriate DOE Office of Science Program Manager and request any additional time that they think they can get. Um, and But still, if the, if the entire project runs out of time, you can uh, still submit jobs to the overrun queue. Here's a long laundry list of all the different uh, uh, links to our website for information that you can uh, need to look up if you have any questions. Uh, for the types of uh, specific types of questions for either uh, user accounts, you can send uh, either submit a trouble ticket through help.nurse.gov or send an email to accounts at nurse.gov. If your question has to do with uh, the um, project allocation, uh, you can send that to allocations at nurse.gov or submit a trouble ticket. Uh, 